But yeah, I think the, the lyrics of that song there, wonderful, eh? At the end, he is perfect in all of his ways, our God. And, and just, uh, just, to, just to think for a moment about his perfection, our Saviour's perfection, and that we can run to him and we can walk with him is, is pretty, it's, it's good news, isn't it? It's good news this morning. Um, so th- uh, we're going to start a, we're going to start on the book of 1 John today, um, which is cool. Um, it, it's, an, uh, it's an epistle, it's an, it was written as a letter by, uh, by a man named John, believe it or not, is, is what they think. Um, and it's the, uh, the uh, so we're going to, today what we're going to do, we're going to give a, a brief overview of the whole, the whole thing of, of 1 John, um, and then we're going to dive into chapter 1. Um, but first we'll do a little bit of an overview. So as I said, it's, um, it was written by, they, they believe, uh, the Apostle John, um, so the same John who was one of Jesus' disciples, a- around the year AD 85 to 95. Um, and so the, there's similar themes and writing style to the Gospel of John. So you'll pick up, you know, as we go through here, you might even like to, in your own time, read, read the Gospel of John at the same time and you'll pick up some of the similar, similar themes. Feel free to do that. Um, but there's a sense of urgency in the letter. Um, John is concerned about some in the church being led astray by false teaching. So that, that, that's one of the, the things within, within the, the letter you'll, you'll pick up on, that, that sense of urgency. Um, and it's a charge to remain in the teaching of Jesus Christ. Okay? He's charging a group of believers to remain in, in Christ and remain in, in his teaching. Uh, and the truth and authenticity of the gospel message. So, so that's a big, a big thing within this, within this epistle. And it's also to give us believers assurance of our salvation. It, it, he goes through a bunch of stuff that are kind of like markers of the Christian. So things that we can look at and think, okay, is my life really lining up with, with what it says in here? Um, and you'll notice in the coming weeks as we go through, we're going to take a little bit more time in this book because some of the chapters were quite big. We've broken them into half. So it'll probably be about seven, eight weeks, I think, that we're going to be diving into this epistle. Um, so we're going to t- just sort of take our time to, to get through it and to really soak it in and to apply it to our lives. Um, but you'll notice that John declares a, a bunch of key truths and themes and then he circles back around and repeats them throughout the letter. So, you know, you might get to week five or six and think, we heard that back in week one, but just receive it. It's, 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 an, old, it's an old literary style that they used to use where they'd, they'd, they'd share something, but then they'd circle back around to it again and repeat it. So it's going to really help it hit home in here. So it's not just going to be a bunch of head knowledge that we get. I'm believing by the, by the grace of God, it's actually going to hit us where it matters most and, and the Lord's going to bear some fruit in us through this, this, uh, this epistle. Um, so I, got, I, I drew. So I got some uh, some some stuff here from the ESV study notes, which was really cool. And I'm I'm literally just going to read it out. It's um, key themes in one John, and um, I just like the way they they put it all together. It was really clear. So some of the key themes that we're going to look at over the next few weeks is is that God is light, God is love. Christians, believers, were once spiritually dead. Then they passed out of death and into life. Who knows that's true? Uh, God loved his people and sent Jesus to die for them. That's an amazing message. Um, Christians have been born of God. God gave Christians life. Amen. I'll just change my page. God gave Christians the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, isn't that? That's good news along with understanding. So we can actually, we're not left alone as believers. The Holy Spirit quickens the word to our, our hearts and, and we can actually live it out. Um, Christians are of God. Christians are of the truth. God abides in Christians, which means remains in Christians, and his word abides in them. Christians abide in God. And therefore abide in the light. That's another theme that we'll that we'll see. Christians know God, they know the Father, they know Jesus, and they know the Spirit. Our God, three in one. 
um, and Christians love God. And it also goes on to say, because they have been born again, have received the Spirit of God, abide in God, and God abides in them, and they know the love of God, Christians bear observable fruit. So, and there's just this, this really cool list here of, you know how we're talking about um, markers of a Christian. There, there, there's, here's, here's a few of them here that we can, that we can look at. And, and the whole purpose of this is, is, is to encourage us, but also to challenge us as believers. If, 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 if as we're going through this, you think, oh, that's, that's not really me at the moment. It's, it's an opportunity to run to your, your heavenly father through Jesus Christ and see him shift something in your life. So, so believers practice the truth and righteousness. I think that, that's pretty cool. They walk in the light as Jesus walked in the light. They confess their sins and have forgiveness. Who's happy about that? Um, they keep and obey his commandments, his word. Amen. They love one another. They overcome the evil one and the world through Jesus. Um, they do the will of God and cannot keep on sinning. That's a good one. They confess the Son and they believe in Jesus. So it's all um, amazing stuff that we're going to be going through and I'm really excited about it. It's almost like the epistle of John is, is a summary, a punchy kind of charge drawn from the Gospel of John. So a lot, like I mentioned, a lot of those themes we're going to pick up on in here. But, but um, some, some uh, theologians think that uh, that John was close to, to dying, like he, the urgency within the message, it's like, this is what I want you to know before, before I cark it. So um, some important stuff in here. Um, but today we're going to focus on chapter one. Um, so I'm just going to read the whole thing uh, to start with. And then what we're going to do, there's, there's almost like two sections within the chapter and we're going to break those down verse by verse. So as, as we um, read through it today, let's let the Word of God be quickened to our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Let's open up our, 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 our lives to Christ. We know that the Word of God is, is living and active. We're told that. So let's let Him impact our lives today um, in the name of Jesus. So I'll just pray before we jump into it and then we'll, 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 we'll dive in. So Lord, we just want to acknowledge Your sovereignty, Father God. We want to acknowledge your Son, Jesus Christ. We acknowledge you, Holy Spirit, and we just thank you that you are our King. You're our sovereign God. And we just ask that you move today. Lord, as, as we read through your Word, as, as, as your Word is spoken, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would pierce our hearts. Father God, that you'd transform us, that you'd, you'd bring us Bring those of us who have been walking in darkness, Lord, into the light of Christ this morning. Lord, I pray for anyone in this room who, who doesn't know you, Jesus. I pray for an open door, Lord, that they may know you too, in Jesus' name. And Lord, that goes for anyone online as well. I pray, Lord, that your word would, would, would pierce our hearts today, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's read through it. So, 1 John chapter 1. Right, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Verse 5, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus' his Son cleanses us 
from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So it's a, um, a real challenging start to the, to the epistle. Um, we're charged that, you know, John is saying he, he, he physically walked with the Messiah, with Jesus Christ, you know, touched him, looked upon, he walked with him. He's making that available. He's, 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 he's hoping that the, the listeners would receive that and also be able to walk with, with Jesus. Um, and, then, and then he gives us this charge about walking in the light and, and not walking in the darkness, turning from sin and, and darkness and, and walking in the light. Um, but I, I'm really keen to go through verse by verse today. Um, and so we're going to start with this first segment, verse uh, 1 through to 4. Um, and we're just going to break it down a little bit um, and, and hopefully, hopefully to help apply it to our lives a little so the first section, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which is with the Father and was made manifest to us, that that which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Okay, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Okay, verse 1. That which, that which was from the beginning... And I just noted there, you know, Jesus existed from the beginning. You know, he, he's, he's always been. You know, you, you read Genesis 1, the account of Genesis, and, and he's there. Um, you also read John chapter 1, and, and there's real parallels there. John, John tells us in verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word, so the Word here is Jesus. The Word was with God, and the Word was God talking about that, that triune God, the, uh, one, uh, three in one. You know, isn't that amazing? He was, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So we can pick up on that theme of light and darkness within that passage as well. But yeah, I just wanted to, to, to speak of that, you know, the wonder of our, our God. One, one God, three in one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Man, if you try and, you can spend so much time trying to understand that, but the, the beauty and, and majesty of, of God, that he is, he, is, he is one, but there's the, these, these three amazing things, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, is very cool. Um, all right, the second part of that, that verse, that which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And I just wanted to pick up on word of life there. Um, the word life in the original language is, is zoe. I think that's how you say it. But it means uh, life, physical and spiritual. It's all, all life throughout the universe is, is derived it, all, it always only comes from and is sustained by God's self-existent life. The Lord intimately shares his gift of life with people, creating each in his image, which gives all the capacity to know his eternal life. So you think of that like God holds the whole universe within his hands and he's given us life and we find life in him. I think that is is very amazing and comforting to know that our life is, is found in him. Thank you, Jesus. Um, verse 2, the life was made manifest. So when, when Jesus came, the life of God was made manifest. Isn't that wonderful? We, God, God came down 
and we have seen it. So this is John, and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. So you think when Jesus was, was born in the, um, in the stable or in the, you know, in the cow shed, um, that, was, that was our loving Father coming down through Jesus Christ. He was made manifest. God saw our condition and he made the move to save us. And this is definitely worth, um, worth sharing. This is good news, you know, that God came down. He saw our condition. He saw our depravity, our deep need for him. He saw our sin. In spite of it, he's like, I'm going to go down. This is the only way I need to send my son to, to save my people, to save the, the people that I've created. So, yeah, just uh, I think there's a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, from that, you, you get a glimpse of, of your worth in Christ, you know, your, your deep worth to God that He would send His only Son for you. And that goes for each of you, for us. Praise Jesus. Thank you. Amen. That is very good. That's good news. Does that, I don't know, does that like, does that excite anyone? Does that, does that just knowing that, that, that Jesus actually cares enough to come down? Hallelujah. I'm going a bit Pentecostal with that one, um, Amen. But I'll, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it a good, good level. Um, okay. All right. This is worth hearing. Yes. Okay. Verse three: That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you, see, look. He's repeating himself again. This is great. Uh, you know, it's just next verse. He's, he's repeating that same point again. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And I love that phrase, so that you too. The good news of Jesus Christ is available to everyone. It, oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a message that's worth repeating, isn't it? You know, it's, 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 it's really good news. You know, so that you too. You know, the, this, the news of Jesus and the gospel message and salvation is available to all people. But people, um, you know, do get to decide whether they respond to that through Christ. And we know that it's a work of God. Salvation is a work of God in every human heart. But, you know, the message is available, but not everyone sadly responds to that, that wonderful message. Um, John 1, we'll, we'll, we'll bounce back to there to, to add, add something to that. So it says John 1, verse 12 to 13. I love this, but to all who did receive him, this is Jesus, who, all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the, of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. You know, I, I think that speaks of becoming children of God as, as being born again through the Spirit of God, through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. That shift in your life where you're taken from uh, spiritual darkness into the light of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's, a, it's an amazing shift, isn't it, in your life? You know, in this room, you think back to that moment where, where Christ came in. You know, if you just reflect on that and just for a moment, you know, of, of the wonder, and, and let's not forget that every day, you know, the, the wonder of Jesus Christ breaking through and saving you. Thank you, Jesus. And also in this verse, um, in verse 3, it mentions fellowship, which is, I think the Greek word for that is koinonia, um, but it means partnership, it means communion. So, so when, um, when it says, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ, it means partnership, communion, that togetherness, and it's, and it's a fellowship that's available to us both with God, that togetherness and partnership with, with God, um, and also together as, as a church, as believers. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a powerful thing, you know, quite a special thing to, to have fellowship with God and with people. Uh, verse 4. Right, let's, let's dive in. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. So it says our joy. That word apparently also means your joy. 
So it's like this, this amazing sense of joy, you know, John's, John's going to have joy, and he's, he's going to have joy, but also those listening, there's that joy that's going to be completed in Christ. Um, and, and, and what a joy it is, you know, what a joy it is to know the good news and to have received the good news and to be walking day by day within the joy of the gospel and, and the joy of our salvation. So that's the, um, that's the first little segment. Now we're going to jump into verses 5 to 10. And the heading, in, in my Bible at least, it says, Walking in the Light. Um, so that's quite an exciting heading. I, I wonder where we're going to go with this. Um, I'll read it all out and then we'll, we'll, we'll dial into each verse again. But this is what it says. It says, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So you think, like, that sentence is really cool because if you remember how he's almost summarizing the Gospels, that is a powerful passage there, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So I think that's really, that's, that's powerful when you realize all, all the light's in God. It's all about Jesus Christ and, and we are only partakers of, of salvation. We, we, we get to walk with God. And we get to walk in the light. Um, so I think that, that verse is really revealing that all glory always and every day should go to our Father in heaven and his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And then verse 6, it says, If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So this is where he, he dials in a bit here. We don't seem to like talking about sin and, and that side of, of life in church sometimes. But I think it's so important to, you know, if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Um, I love the way John is he's up front with this. You know, and it's easy for um, sometimes for people to straddle the fence and you're kind of, you know, you're part of church but you're also living this different lifestyle outside of church or, or there's that, that sort of dual life going on. But the good news is that, that uh, Jesus can change that as, as you come to him in humility and ask him to shift you and transform you by his awesome grace. Okay, so verse 7. But if we walk in the light, here you go, as he is in the light... We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus' Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. Okay, I was getting a bit ahead of myself trying to break it down while I was meant to just be reading it. So we'll, we'll break it down and I'll probably repeat myself a little bit now. But that's fine. Verse 5. Okay, so let's get into it. So this is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you. He's going for it again. He's repeating it again, isn't he? That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Um, and I love that, you know. This is the message we have heard. So you think this is an actual person who walked with Jesus. You know, they think John was the one who, who lay down and with Jesus on, at the Last Supper and, and was sitting, sitting closely with Jesus. Apparently he was the disciple that Jesus loved. He's, he, he was known for that as well. Um, but you think about that. This is quite a special message from someone who literally walked with Christ. And, and, and he's sharing this with, with the wider church which is pretty special. But what was the message that they proclaimed? It's that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. He is completely perfect like we sang today. He's perfect in all of his ways. Um, he's, he's, he's righteous. He's wonderful. We can only approach him through Jesus Christ. We can't, you can't get to God without Christ. You can't do it in your own strength. You can't earn salvation. You can't earn brownie points with God. Um, he's holy. He's mighty. He's praiseworthy. He's incredible. But thank God for Jesus that we can draw near. 
You know, we can draw near to God because of Jesus and because of his sacrifice for us. And that's very good news. Um, I want to uh, look at this whole thing of light and darkness. So we're going to break that down a little bit. Um, right, so light in the original language, it's, uh, it's a word called phos. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's P-H-O-S. And it says um, that in the New Testament, the manifestation of God's self-existent life, divine illumination to reveal and impart life through Christ. Might just get a bit of water. A bit sort of husky, eh? Amen. Okay, so yeah, divine illumination to reveal and impart life through Christ. That's, that's pretty cool. And another um, translation came through as a source of light, radiance. So you think of that, that's like awe-inspiring, isn't it? You know, God is light. Um, and to drive home this, this picture of light, we'll jump over to Hebrews 1, verse 1 to 3. Um, this uses a different word for light. It's, it's radiance, but it, it really, it's the same. It's on that same theme to, to drive forward that, that sense of God and his majesty um, revealed in Jesus Christ. So it says, Long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. And listen to this verse 3. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And, <coughs> excuse me, guys. Um, so, yeah, this word here, radiance, I love it. I love it. Um, the, I'll read it out. So, so this is what it, what it means. It refers to Christ's eternal radiance, okay? Like a beam, his the beauty, his awe, supremely reflecting the glory of the Godhead. That's our Father, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, our God, Okay? His eternal light breaks through all the darkness that keeps someone in spiritual ignorance bondage. For example, every resistance exerted by sin. So this whole theme of light and darkness, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, um, it's God coming in through Jesus Christ and breaking that sin, the radiance of his glory coming through and piercing you here to the point where you don't want to sin anymore and you turn away from you turn away from that sin. That's what repentance is. It's not just, I'm sorry, God, and then we continue down the same road again and again, the same cycles of sin again and again. Uh, and this isn't condemnation. This is the beauty of Christ that if we open our hearts to him and his word and, and really, Lord, change me, Lord, I, I humble myself before you, Lord, I don't want to live in that sin anymore. And you let the light of Christ burst forth into your core and, and, and turn away from that sin and say, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm, I'm going to get rid of that by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and we can walk a new way. You know, the, the past doesn't have to, to cling on to you like that. You know, you, you can let go and forgive those, those people who wronged you only by the grace of God, not in your own strength. Those hooks can be taken out through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let his light come in this morning and pierce through the darkness and set you free in Jesus' name. Amen. Let it be done and let it be to the glory of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so that's light. Um, now we're going to look at darkness. This is a lot shorter. It's quite, it's quite nice and simple, this one. It just says, the Greek word is scotia and it just the, um, the, tra the translation I could come, come, uh, that I found in Strong's was uh, spiritual darkness or sin. So that one's pretty clear, um, yeah, which I thought was really, really helpful. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's, that's really clear. Okay, um, so yeah, you've got this, this picture of God's amazing radiance, his light, 
you know, we want to walk in the light. We don't want to walk in darkness. We don't want to walk in spiritual darkness, not knowing Christ. That's, that's a, sad, a sad and scary place to be, not knowing Christ. Um, but also as Christians, we don't want to be sort of hovering around the shadows. and We dip our feet into the light on Sundays and then we're walking around in the shadows during the week saying our praises and hallelujahs and, and God is great, but, but, but lingering in those places that are, that are sucking the life out of you. Um, and the, these themes of sin and, and holiness are repeated and expanded in other places, okay? Um, we've mentioned the book of John, the, the gospel of John, the light and darkness, as you'll read that through the book of John. Um, and also, I've been um, di- diving into Romans 6 a bit recently, which is a, on a similar sort of theme. It's um, whether you're a slave to sin or a slave to God. And it's, it's, it's expanding that whole theme of, of who are we going to live for? Are we going to live for, basically, um, are we going to live for Christ or are we going to live for the devil? Ouch. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's pretty hard hitting. But, um, but thanks be to God, through Jesus, we can live for Christ. Eh? We can live for the Father and we can, we can walk in the light. Amen. Okay, verses 6 to 7. Okay, we're going to go a bit deeper here. Okay, if we say we have fellowship with him, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Thanks, John. That's, that's, that's true. Um, verse 7, but if we walk... In the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. So in, in these verses, there's like, these, there's like an if we say and if we walk statement. You know, he, he starts by saying, if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness. Um, but then he says, if we walk and we, and we want to be believers who are walking with Christ, that, that his life is seen in our lives, that our actions are lining up with our convictions, the things that we all want. We all want to live for Christ, don't we? You know, it's not like we come to church every week and, 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 and profess to follow Christ and want to live in the shadows. That's not how it works. You know, you, you, you want to walk with Christ, don't you? Of course. Of, of course we want to walk with Christ and in Christ. Um, and then the next phrase, we have fellowship with one another. And, and this is cool. That's that same word again, fellowship, partnership, communion. But that actually means fellowship with God. You know, because you, you could read that verse, but if we walk in the light as, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. You might think, yeah, with the congregation. Yeah, it certainly helps that, but this is actually talking about fellowship with God. So that's quite special, you know, the communion with God, um, and, and, and you're participating, you're walking, you're, you're relating to God. He's, he's walking with you. Um, and then this, the final section there, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And that's, that's, the, that's the key, that everything hinges upon what Christ has done in our faith. Like, without Christ, there'd be no Christianity, you know, obviously. But, you know, you've got to, we've got to remember that with, without Christ, if God didn't send Christ into the world, where would we be? You know, crazy. Cleansed us of, yeah, in the darkness, amen. Um, yeah, so cleansed of sin through Jesus Christ. So this is actually a really amazing passage because it's, it's hard hitting in a good way. It's like, you know, John's not mucking around. He's like, he's 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 hitting he's hitting you here, right? Eh? He's like, oh dang, okay, yep, yeah, he's, he's he's got me there, you know. But he's also offering the solution. And so and so when you when you think about your sin, and and all of that, um, remembering that Christ has made the way out is so important. You know, and that you can come to him, and we're going to actually dive into that in the next few verses. Um, but I love it what John's done here. He's he's proclaiming a full gospel where it's like, yes, there's the darkness. Yes, you know, sin is uh, you know there 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 is sin present, but through Christ, there's a way forward, and 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 you can live 
in Christ and he can cleanse you from sin. Amen. And, and um, yeah, I think that's major in our, in our faith that, you know, all through our lives we want to be, you know, have you heard the word sanctification? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really cool word. It's, it's like it's the journey of walking in Christ and, and him shaping, changing, molding us um, and, and making us more like Jesus all through our lives, you know, and until we get to be with him in, in glory, you know. Um, and I know that Christ wants to, wants to come back for a beautiful church, for a beautiful bride. And the, 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 thing that is, um, the thing that is so sad is when, when, when us Christians profess to know Christ, but we, but we live under the bondage of sin still, you know, in different areas of our lives. So my, my encouragement today is to lay it all bare before Christ and to confess our sins to him and receive forgiveness and, and, and be cleansed of sin through Jesus Christ. It's only him who can do it. He, he alone has the power to cleanse us from our sin because of what he did on the cross, because he took our place and went the whole way for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Man, we need him every day. We need Jesus every day, every day of our lives. We need to keep coming back to him, keep walking in the light. Um, amen. Um, verses 8 to 10. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And again, there's, there's two statements there. There's if we say, if we confess. It's easy to say things, isn't it? <laughs> have you noticed? It's easy to say things, but... Um, yeah, I think the the proof. Uh, this is pretty. This this seems rough, but the proof is in the pudding. You know, in our Christian lives. You know, by the grace of God, um, and I love this because um, He's exhorting us not to live on the fence. You know, to not deceive ourselves. We don't want to live in that place, do we? Where we're where we're, where we're deceiving ourselves. You know, where we're saying we have no sin. Um, and deceiving ourselves. But what we do want to do is we want to be people who confess freely to God our, our sins and receive that, that forgiveness. And, and, and confess to one another, you know, to, to trusted other believers, to confess your sin, to, to bring these things into the light and let the light of Christ shine on and, and set you free from those things. Um, yeah, so we don't want to live on the fence. We don't want to deceive ourselves. I don't, want to live, I don't want to live a life deceived myself. doesn't sound like very fun. Um, but the, I love it. The solution is confess our sins. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Nice and clear. Um, and God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. He is faithful. And again, let's just notice that it all hinges upon Jesus Christ. Okay, salvation, sanctification, living for, for God, it all hinges upon Jesus Christ and doing it by the power of the Holy Spirit and not just trying to tick boxes and, and look good on the outside. Because that won't, last. that won't last for long. You know, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's tiring trying to live the Christian life in your own strength. Um, it's impossible, in fact. Um, so thanks be to God that through Jesus Christ we can we can live in Christ. Okay, so a couple more pages to get through. We're, we're almost there, and I and I did. Um, so in light of all this, what should we do? It's probably a good thing to think about. You know, we've got this great passage of scripture. What should we do? Okay, so firstly, let's have a look at that first segment, verse 1 to 4. And I, in summary, I, what I believe that's, that's telling us is to believe and receive Jesus Christ fully. 
Okay, you know, accept that he is the son of God. Accept that he really did walk on the earth and do everything he said he did. That he, that he was uh, both fully, fully divine, fully God and fully man. You know, to believe his testimony because his testimony is true. Um, you know, let us be a people who live by conviction and keep our eyes upon Jesus Christ. I think Mike was saying last week about, um, about keeping our eyes upon Christ, not getting caught up with all the other stuff that's going on. But, but why not be telling about the great things Jesus is doing? You know, not, not to live, not to live um, unaware of what's going on, but to make the main story Jesus Christ and how good he is. Um, and I, I believe it's also an exhortation for us to build our lives upon the rock of Jesus Christ and, and his wonderful testimony. Because, yeah, it's, it's, um, if you look back on history, you know, the, this, this book is, is well accredited, you know, within historical text. Um, so I encourage you to, to believe it fully, you know, to, to take it on. Um, and then also just in, 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 in human experience, because that, that's a great indicator as well. Uh, through through the years, the many millions and millions of lives that have been transformed through this testimony of Jesus Christ is incredible. You, you, there's so many books written about what God's done in people's lives, and each of you also has has a testimony of of what Christ has done in your life. So that first section, believe and receive Christ fully. Amen. Let's do that. And then secondly. Uh, verses 5 to 10, John is charging us, in summary, to walk in the light. Okay? To walk in the light. To come out of the darkness of sin and to not live in the shadows anymore. It's not a fun place to live. Um, to turn, yeah, turn from your lifestyle of sin. Turn to Christ to repent and, and change by the grace of God. Run to God. Confess your sins. Receive his wonderful mercy lavished upon you through Jesus Christ and let him wash you clean. Let Christ's commands govern your heart and your mind. Get hungry for what did Jesus say? There's that old saying of um, what would Jesus do? Is to have the bracelets and stuff. I reckon that's a goodie, eh? Good thing to remember. You know, what would Jesus do? And to, to go for it by the grace of God. Walk as Jesus walked through the power of the Holy Spirit. If you read Jesus' life, that's a challenging, a challenging thought. But, but through the Holy Spirit and by the grace of God, we can walk as Jesus walked. And, and we'll get it. There's more, more on that later in, in the epistle. Um, uh, and then just practically love God, love the people around you. Uh, and I wrote service and humility. They're, they're great markers of a Christian, eh? Amen. Um, and I put here, whether we have real lasting fellowship with God or not is seen in whether we practice the truth. You know, we can't earn our way to God. I said that earlier. You know, he's already made a way through Jesus Christ to save those who believe in him. So we can't earn salvation. But the fruitfulness of our lives is determined by whether we walk in obedience to the truth, whether we walk in the light of Christ. And it's only by the grace of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we can do so. Um, so yeah, that, that's the message today. Um...